Bank of America is out with a new report on their clients' credit and debit card spending, with the results showing a nearly 1% increase of spending in August over the last year. This comes after the data showed a year-over-year -year drop in July. So what's fueled last month's spending uptick? Here to help answer that question is David Tinsley, Bank of America Institute Senior Economist. So, so David, let's start there. What are folks spending their money on? Well, mainly services. So it's mainly an experiences story. So when we dig into our data, what we're seeing is uh, tourism, uh, both within the US and externally, internationally, has been strong really over the last few months. Lots of action in Europe, stimulated in part by Taylor Swift, the Olympics in Paris. Uh, but domestically, it's been pretty good as well. When we look at spending uh, that people are making 500 miles away from their, their home, in other words, kind of like domestic tourism spending, that's oh. been strong. Okay, so services, a big, a big spending uptick there. There's been increased concerns about the unemployment rate taking higher, the state of the labor market. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What does this data tell us, though, about where the labor market is at today? And what does that signal, perhaps, about the health of the consumer? I, I think it signals in our data. So what we're seeing is when we look at the wages going into people's bank accounts, we're seeing for the lower income, that's up about 4% year on year. And for the higher income, Households, it's pulled up a little bit. It's about 1% year on year. So the labor market is cooling uh, for sure. I think the official data shows that. But there's still, in a sense, wind behind the sails of the consumer for now, at least. Can that continue? Well, I think it can continue for the foreseeable future. I mean, clearly, you know, the job list, uh, the, the jobs data showed a pullback. If that continues, eventually you'll see some softening in wages. But I think that, and the other thing I think is worth mentioning, is that people still have this kind of cash buffer in their accounts mm -hmm. relative to 2019 before the pandemic. So that helps them feel a little bit more confident about spending as well. So what are some of the biggest risks that could perhaps stop the wind in the sails for, for these consumers? You, you mentioned unemployment, but are there other things that, that could potentially derail? Yeah, the labor market's the obvious one. But the other thing we're pointing at in the checkpoint this week uh, and, you know, we're looking at these sort of 69 million customers the bank has. And we're looking at their auto payments in part in this checkpoint. And we're seeing, you know, if you did buy a car, lots of people didn't. But if you did buy a car over the last few years and finance that on these quite high rates of interest uh, on the car financing rates, you are likely to see quite a steep auto payment rise. Uh, I think about 10 percent of people who pay their car loans are seeing a rise of about $400 or more relative to 2022. So if the, if the economy does go south, those people might struggle a little bit in terms of financing the cash to keep those uh, loan payments going, or alternatively, they have to pull back a bit on spending in order to make room for them. And I want to dig in a little deeper about how this all breaks down demographically, really. You mentioned this bifurcation between lower income, higher income consumer. What about generationally as well? Yeah, that's interesting. So what we've seen in our data for quite a long period of time, really, is it's actually the older generations who are doing, doing better than the younger generations in terms of spending. And for a time, that story was about the fact that they got these quite large cost of living increases for their social security retirement incomes. That's not quite so true now, but it's still the case that there is a bit, a bit of a divergence with the older gens basically outspending. Got it. And we talked a lot about the jobs market, but the inflation story, it's another one that we are consistently discussing. But we have seen sticky areas of inflation like shelter. But I did think it was interesting that in this report, there's evidence of a slowdown in housing cost inflation. So what are you seeing there? Yeah, that's interesting. So what we do in this report is we look at when people move apartment, their rents before and after, keep them in the same city in the, in the, in the study group to make sure we're not conflating people's cost of living choices, what we're seeing is that those rents before and after a move are pretty much flat. They're pretty much zero. So in other words, while shelter inflation in the CPI has been quite sticky and persistent, and you know the Fed is worried about that somewhat, uh, we're seeing some signs that rent inflation will come down as a result of that softening in the market. Yeah, I think that would be welcoming news right, for, for, for a lot of folks out there. But David Tinsley, Bank of America Institute Senior Economist, thank you so much for the insight. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it.